I'm in Sydney's newest district, Barangaroo. It's a centre of urban living and working. And I'm here to find out about a university science experiment involving solar panels, the rooftop garden upon which they sit, and the surprising benefits that have been discovered when we green these spaces. Let's go take a look. The building is called Durhamu House, which in the Sydney Aboriginal language means tree house. It's made totally of wood that was flat packed and sent over from Norway. I'm meeting Dr. Peter Erger from the University of Technology in Sydney to find out about his research into this unusual space. So Peter, what are some of the aims of the experiment here? We really wanted to test and quantify the benefits of the green roof combined with the solar panels. We know that we can use greenery to cool cities. And one of the co-benefits of using these green roofs is that we could potentially cool not only the building uh, for its insulation effects, but also cool the solar panels. The solar panels will become more efficient because they actually work better at a lower temperature at 25 degrees Celsius. What makes this experiment so unique is that we have an identical roof next to Daramu House, which doesn't have the rooftop garden. And in experimental terms, this acts as our control. So we can make comparisons against it. We have over 300 panels here and th over 300 panels on the other roof as well. We wanted to be able to compare its ability to increase the solar energy provision, its stormwater mitigation properties, so how well it re can reduce floods, its biodiversity uh, provisions, so how well it can increase insects and animals. Peter, how are you capturing some of this data? We have temperature gauges in the soil and on the solar panels, and this is generating data every five minutes and has been doing so for the last year. We're also using thermal imagery cameras that are conventionally used in a lot of research. We have camera traps across the roof to record biodiversity, um, and we also looked at the heavy metals that are in the uh, stormwater flow uh, coming out of, off the roof as well. So what were some of the results when you did compare the two roofs? The temperature data that we recorded is quite astounding. On the roof without the garden, temperatures rise to about 60 degrees Celsius on a 30 degrees Celsius day due to the reflective heat generated from the concrete. Here, the garden keeps the temperatures below 30 degrees Celsius. And what we found is that the solar panels work more efficiently when they are at that lower temperature. There are more amazing results to come but first, I want to find out about the planting and what makes this garden so successful. Ollie is from Jungle Fire, the company that installed this green roof. It's a big project. What kind of rooftop space are we looking at? We're looking at around 1,500 square metres. Um, it's sitting in around 200 millimetres of soil and we've got around 10,000 plants sitting in that soil. So 10,000 plants, uh, I see there's quite a few of them are natives. There is, we've used a couple of the native species underneath the solar panels. We're focusing on the ground covers under there. So one we might pull out is the viola uh, or native violet. Works well, it's nice and green and lush, so it brings down that temperature and it also flowers all year round. Other ground covers, we've got dechondra, we've got aptinia, and then we have some of the other species like the dianella here as well. You look around and there, there's literally where the green is, it's 100% coverage. It is, and that's one of the most important parts of this roof, is it is functional, it's there to cool. Uh, this is not a public access roof. The other benefits of a green roof is encouraging biodiversity. What, what kind of insects and animals are you finding come to visit? Probably one of the biggest uh, biomasses on this roof is probably ants. Then they get eaten by the smaller insects, which get eaten by the bigger insects, which the birds come and eat those insects. And then we have the predatory birds that come and eat those birds. And then we're seeing something that's really exciting, which is the Australian blue-banded bee. It means there's a full trophic cascade and we've actually reached a biodiverse environment here. One of the more exciting benefits we're seeing from this research is the increase in uh, money that's generated because this energy is sold back into the grid. Compared to our control roof, we find that the solar panels on this roof increases energy output uh, by about $4,500 over a period of a year. 
The green roof can also insulate the building, uh, so we're using less of that energy. We're hoping that we can have an entire building that doesn't need to use any energy off the grid whatsoever. We're also looking at the heavy metal accumulation. So when it rains, it actually washes a lot of pollutants out of the atmosphere, and it's actually reducing uh, copper, chromium, lead by about 70 to 90%. Without this green roof, those heavy metals are flowing into the estuary and into the Sydney Harbour here. We did a lot of work with the stormwater benefits that this green roof provide. We're looking at a reduction of about 90% of the uh, initial flow from storm event. So this green roof potentially could be mitigating floods. It's a no brainer for us in Australia to be combining solar panels with uh, a green roof or plants in general like this. So those multiple benefits can extend to the home garden, whether they're in an apartment or whether they're looking to green their own walls, their own roofs. Precisely. I mean, we don't, we shouldn't be limited to just our backyard. Why not think of our, um, our houses as an entire green canvas?